we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus and how useful it is. I mean, it is fundamental after all. Um, so here's one example. We certainly have been dealing with um, velocity and position functions. If I give you the velocity of a particle at any given x, if I give you uh, that it's time 1, the position of the particle is 3 units to the right of the origin, find the function p of x. Well, I don't need the fundamental theorem of calculus for this, right? We can just take the antiderivative of v of x, and that will give me my p of x as long as I have my constant c, right? So, in other words, I can do this. And that's pretty straightforward to x squared plus c. I was given some information at time 1. My position is 3, so I'm going to replace that with a 3. And I can now replace all my x's with a 1. And this is going to allow me to find my c. So let's see. I have... 1 third plus 2, that's 2 and 1 third, so I'm pretty sure my c would be 2 thirds, okay? So p of x would be 1 third x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2 thirds, and I hope I did my arithmetic correctly. So the question is, what if my velocity were not a nice function? By a nice function, I mean, what if I could not find the antiderivative or the integral of my velocity? What if, in fact, it didn't have an elementary antiderivative? For example, if my velocity were the cosine of x squared, right? Well, we don't know how to find the antiderivative of the cosine of x squared. I, you know, go ahead and give it a whirl, but I don't think you're going to be successful, right? <clears throat> because it doesn't have an elementary antiderivative. But I still want to be able to write an expression for its position. Okay? How can I do that? Well, that's when the fundamental theorem of calculus, part one, comes in handy. Let's remember our fundamental theorem of calculus, part one. That says that I can take the integral from A to B of f prime of x dx. You can write this in different ways. That's the antiderivative of f, which I'll just call f of x, evaluated at b, and then minus f of a. Okay? Now, if I add f of a to both sides, that leaves f of b by itself. I'm just going to bring it over to the left. And this is very powerful. Rewriting the fundamental theorem of calculus part one in this way basically allows me to write the function to find the antiderivative or the integral of any function. This is going to allow me to write a position function for this, where I know the velocity is cosine of x squared. Let's see how I can do it. Okay? So let's say I want to find p of uh, t. I'll just give it a new variable there, OK? So I'm going to start at p of 1, because that I know, plus the antiderivative, or the integral, from 1 to t, because that's where I'm ending, of the cosine of x squared dx. And this is sometimes called a dummy variable, right? I'm analyzing it from 1 to t. All right? So I have been able to write a function that's going to give me my position. And I can go further and say, oh, well, p of 1 is 3. So 1 to t of cosine of x squared dx. There it is. That's my position function. 
Now, I could use a calculator to analyze this. I could graph the cosine of x squared and try to figure out the area between that and the curve, right? But this is a function that is usable. Alrighty? Does that make sense? Now, once I have a function, <clears throat> I can use the fundamental theorem of calculus part two to analyze that function. Let's just rewrite that function up here. One to t cosine of x squared dx, okay? I could analyze this function. I could take the derivative of this function. I could take uh, the second derivative of this function. I could do all of that using my second fundamental theorem of calculus, okay? Now, of course, taking the derivative of it, I'm going to go back to where I started, the velocity, but let's just recall what the fundamental theorem of calculus part two says. And that says, if I have an integral from some constant to some expression in terms of x, um, some function, <clears throat> let's just say f of t dt, and I want to take the derivative with respect to x. All right? So again, I've got a dummy variable here. U is some expression of x. I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. The derivative of an integral, well, they're inverses of each other, so those undo each other. And that becomes f of u times, and this is the chain rule, I'm taking the derivative, so I have to do the chain rule, times the derivative of u. Okay? Is this making some sense? So, if I wanted to look at this function, and let me just tweak it a little bit and say I'm going to, um, let's say, uh, 3x squared, and let's turn this into a t, just so we have a different dummy variable, okay? And let's say I want to find the derivative of this, okay? All right, I know I'm kind of messing with you now. All right, changing variables. The derivative of 3 constant is 0, okay? The derivative of this, here's my fundamental theorem of calculus, this guy right here is going in here, so it's going to be the cosine of 3x squared, quantity squared, times chain rule, the derivative of 3x squared, which is 6x. Okay? And then I can bring that up front and just kind of clean that up. 9x to the fourth. That would be the derivative of that function. Don't worry too much about how I changed the variables. Okay, that doesn't matter too much. But, is this making sense? Okay, that's the fundamental theorem of calculus, part two, which allows me to take derivatives of integrals. All right, just a tiny little example. I hope that's helpful.